I think we should go over uh, a little recap of the AWC. Um, we got we got kind of an infographic here from Mystical. So he said he had some free time before his meetings this morning, and he went through NA and EU Cup number one VODs and put together graphs of what specs were played. Some of the formatting gets weird when I upload it here. Okay, so we can take a look at what specs were played. Um, if you guys did not get a chance to watch the tournament, um, I'm just going to tell you the finals. For, we'll go over all the games, but I'm going to tell you the finals in both regions. Um, the first final was Subtlety Rogue, Windwalker, Monk, Holy Priest. And I think a lot of people wouldn't be super surprised to hear that a rogue was in the finals, but Windwalker, Monk, and a Holy Priest together, that, that's very surprising. It makes a lot of sense when I think about the comp. It, it, it seems really, really solid, and obviously they played crazy, but um, yeah, I, I was not expecting that one. And the team that they played against primarily played Warrior, Demon Hunter, Ellie, Resto Druid. So kind of a combination of those classes. So they actually cleaved a lot as DH Warrior, which was really surprising. Demon Hunter Warrior actually beat Arcane RMD, which I would have never, ever, ever guessed. Two cleave comps beat Arcane Rogue Mage Druid. And I think most players in the game would expect like Arcane Rogue Mage Druid to just beat every cleave in the game, and somehow they lost the two different cleaves, which is crazy. So that was a, uh, a bit unexpected. And then the finals of NA. NA felt like it was all about Resto Shaman. It was all about Resto Shaman Outlaw. And then some sort of variance of caster. So we had one team, Void, play mostly Destro Warlock. This is the top three. So you had one team playing Outlaw, Resto Shaman, Destro. You had the move playing Outlaw, Resto Shaman, um, Shadow Priest. And then you had a Cedus team or Liquid uh, play Outlaw, Resto Shaman, Boomkin. So my, my, my assessment is kind of what I thought. I actually called, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a, I don't want to say I'm proud of myself because I don't think it was that brave of a prediction, but I did predict every single team in the top four for both regions would play with the Demon Hunter or a Rogue or a Rogue or a Demon Hunter. And it remained true. I think the only thing that beat Rogues was the Demon Hunter. Other rogues beat rogues and demon hunters beat rogues. But the rogues could obviously beat the demon hunters as well. So I think those are kind of like the main. Those are the main two things right now. It seemed like to me. Like you kind of need a rogue or a demon hunter. And then you build your comp around those. Anyways, so let's take a look here at this infographic. Because we like graphics. We like data. We like graphics. Okay, so this is uh, cup number one. Uh, in the AWC. So you have melee played. I wish they had like win rates and stuff like that. I'm trying to think of, okay, so, oh, okay, here we go. So you have Windwalker Monk, Subtlety Rogue. That was the team that ended up winning. Now they paired together. And I think that was the only Subtlety Rogue uh, that was really played. Every other Rogue played Outlaw. So in Europe, we had the Windwalker Subtlety Rogue team. They obviously played a lot coming from the lower bracket and they owned. So they played really well. Um, then we had Outlaw Rogues, which were represented, but slightly less represented than in NA and Demon Hunters. Uh, Warrior, which I'm trying to think. Warrior, I think, only played with Demon Hunter and then also a little bit with Ellie Shaman. A little bit. We saw WLS too, but I think they just lost. So the Warrior, surprisingly, did super well with the Demon Hunter. That cleave seemed really strong. Uh, they played it really interestingly too. Like the warrior just built himself like a complete tank, playing like forty-five percent versatility and, and gladiator's emblem, and kind of just survived and supported the D the DH as much as possible. And then uh, it really falls off after that. Like we saw a little bit of unholy death knight, but it was kind of we saw a little bit of feral, but didn't end up working out. And then in the top eight, we saw none of these other specs. Um. But I will say in the open bracket, we did see, what did we see? In the open bracket, did we see anything else? We saw a little survival hunter from Big Mix. And we saw a little bit of, did we see DK? I feel like we didn't, yeah. I don't think we did see many, much DK. Um, for ranged DPS, lots of Destro Warlocks, um, mostly paired with an Outlaw Rogue. Um, but surprisingly, Destro with a Demon Hunter also did really well. Um, Arcane Mage, primarily paired with an Outlaw Rogue. Uh, Ellie Shaman, mostly paired with an Outlaw and an Arms Warrior. 
Um, and then we saw a little Beastmaster, a little Devastation, but obviously it wasn't played that much and they got eliminated pretty quick. And then in Europe, we actually saw no Shadow Priest, which I think is going to be, I think that's going to change. I think based off what we saw in NA, I already saw Raikou practicing Shadow Priest. So I think they uh, might start investing in RPS because uh, obviously it looked really, really, really good. So uh, we're seeing Raikou practice Shadow Priest. So I expect that number to go way up. We saw no Hunters in the top eight, no Frost, no Fire Mages, no Demo, no Boomkins. Boomkins are also very good, I think. No Og, no Shadow, or no Affliction Warlocks. And then uh, for healers, uh, even though... Actually, I guess that Resto Druid was in the finals. So we saw Resto Druid in the finals in Europe. We saw Holy Priest a lot, which is insane. I don't, like, like I said, another one of those big surprises was Holy Priest. I think going into the tournament, most people just expected all Resto Druid with Resto Shaman. Um, but the Holy Priest with this Cleave composition, the Subtlety Rogue Windwalker Monk, did really well. That was the only Holy Priest I think we saw in the top eight. But we saw a lot of European teams played Holy Priest in the open bracket. A ton. So pre-top eight, there was a ton of Holy Priest, which I didn't really expect. Um, in the top eight, there was obviously no Mistweaver Monks. But in the open bracket, we saw a decent amount. A little bit of Prez, but obviously didn't do too great. A little Holy Paladin didn't do too great. Um, but the main story was, of course, the Resto Druid, the Holy Priest, and the Resto Shaman um, playing. Now, NA, I think, was... There's some similarities between NA and EU, uh, but obviously you can see a few differences. A few differences here. Um, in NA, it's all about the Outlaw Rogue. Everybody's playing Outlaw Rogue. Everybody loves the Outlaw Rogue. I'm trying to think, can you guys give me a reminder? Who played Windwalker Monk? I know Chun-Li played a little bit of Windwalker Monk uh, with Day's Demon Hunter, but I think they lost every game. What else was playing Windwalker? Who else was playing Windwalker? I'm trying to think. Oh, well, oh, we saw Dorito, right? Dorito. Dorito played it a little bit, and then Draco Cleave played it a little bit. So Draco Cleave played Windwalker Monk, uh, Windwalker DK with a Frost DK, um, and they did pretty well. I think they got eliminated in seventh or something like that, and then uh, Dorito uh, played with Laros. So they played Warrior uh, Windwalker Monk. And um, they also got eliminated in 7th slash 8th, I do believe. Actually, uh, Draco Cleave lost in 6th. So some Windwalker Monk's getting some slight representation there, but all the top teams are just playing Outlaw Rogue. Now that might change. We might see more teams invest in Demon Hunter. Um, I do think Demon Hunters are really underrepresented in NA for how strong they are. And I think we might end up seeing more Subtlety Rogue, maybe. Like some teams might end up trying that Windwalker Subtlety Rogue comp. Uh, but yeah, Outlaw is the main story. Um, for range DPS, we saw a ton of Shadow Priest, only Wiz K, lots of Boomkin, only uh, Sam I Am, uh, a good amount of Destro, Arcane Mage. I think, I think Arcane was actually only played by Cubsy. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think it was only played by Cubsy, and we saw a little Devastation Evoker with Draco Cleave, and then no Marks, no Frost, no Fire, no Ellie, uh, no Demo, no BM, no Augmentation, and no uh warlocks no warlocks um yep kind of makes sense raikou played arcane yeah that's uh in europe and he actually didn't play arcane that much to be honest that was that was a big that I don't, I don't know how you guys feel about this i know arcane is an annoying spec but before this tournament i saw a lot of arcane propaganda and i'm gonna be honest man according to like the top eight in both regions arcane fell short compared to some of the other casters I'm not saying Arcane's bad. I know it's good. But I just think when you stack it up with some of these other specs, it's not necessarily OP overall, you know? So it's me defending the Arcane Mage a little bit because I've seen people call for Arcane Mage nerfs and uh, it's not like it's winning. So um, anyways, uh, we have healers played. We've got uh, the Restoration Shaman playing a ton. A Resto Druid. And then every other healer was kind of just a dud. Um, meet playing the, the Mistweaver a little bit. We had a little Holy Paladin, a little bit of Disc Priest with Kearney uh, counter comping. Um, but outside of Kearney counter comping on Disc, we didn't see Disc really at all. So zero Holy Priest, zero Prez Evoker. Um, the main teams that are just really focusing on Resto Shaman, uh, which seemed super strong. Like I think Resto Shaman is really good into Outlaw Rogue. That's like the main, the main thing right now is Resto Shaman's really good into Outlaw Rogue. 
Um, so that's why a ton of, of the healers are playing it with like poison cleansing totem and stone skin totem and earthen wall totem. Like these totems are super duper effective. And uh, obviously you're really mana efficient also. So the game's a little bit unstable, but in that longevity battle, uh, the wrestler shaman does really well. So if you have like one of these durable casters to back you up and you have an outlaw rogue to back you up, um, shaman's sick, oh, which is really cool to see. I'm trying to think of the big surprises. Because I, I did, like I said, I kind of anticipated that we we're going to see a lot of Demon Hunters and a lot of Rogues, and we did see that. And in terms of casters, it seemed pretty balanced. Healers, uh, it's kind of clear that Wrestler Druid and Wrestler Shaman is the most represented. Some niche comps with the Windwalker uh, Subtlety Rogue, but overall it was sick. And I, I will say the open bracket prior to top eight had a lot more classes and a lot more comps, a lot more specs represented. So I, I think that's what made this cup so fun is people were playing different things. To an extent, like in NA, the finals was kind of everyone was playing similar stuff. Um, but yeah, I kind of wonder if there'll be any balancing changes before. Um, is there any? Is there anything that you guys? Yeah, I'll link you guys a tweet. Is there anything that you guys expected that we didn't see? I'm trying to think. Like, what what's a big surprise that we didn't see more of? Because I feel like I kind of. Makes sense what happened. No DHLE. There was a lot of DHLEs actually. They just all lost. Demo lock. I was a bit surprised. Like one of, one of the things that really surprised me about uh, Europe in particular is that nobody would play Wizard Cleaves. But uh, I spoke with Raikou a little bit. He was saying that he didn't think Wizard Cleaves would actually win. So like I was like, why don't you guys play Demo Frost? Like Demo Frost is really good into Cleaves, and he's like, well, they can just kill our healer. And we can only win in deep dampening. So we have to live till deep dampening against a team that's just one-shotting us the whole game. And it's tough. So I was like, all right, I guess that makes sense. I really thought we'd see more wizards. And we saw basically none, right? I expected jungle to do well. But jungle, the problem with jungle is outlaw just kills you. Like, I feel like if it was like a subtlety rogue meta, maybe we'd see more jungle. Um, or like an assassination, but the problem is Outlaw just doesn't die to jungle and just shuts you down the entire game. Wizards have a slow peel. That's usually the problem. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited. There's some teams that uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing next week. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of a recap of what specs were the absolute best in the tournament. What are the, what are the pros playing? You know, what specs are the pros playing and winning with? And uh, this is what we saw. It's an overview of what we saw.